We actually heard about the Paul School um, from early intervention and our therapist, and she had actually told us to come and visit the school. And shortly before that, I had met a woman, Matt Schneiderly, who's a wonderful woman here, um, Kelly's grandma, and she said, you really have to go see this school. So that's kind of how I got here, was Matt Schneiderly. <laughs> I credit her with everything. That's great. Yes, we have had a wonderful experience at DePaul, um, from the administration to the teachers, everyone here, first off, is so welcoming to our family. But as far as the education, it is top notch. And I feel that he has just opened up so much in this past year since he started preschool here. And he's a totally different kid. So we are so happy with the education here and with his progress. It really means a lot. Yes, I would definitely suggest parents look at both different educational modalities, both American Sign Language and listen and spoken language and find out what's the best fit for their family. Um, for our family, it was listen and spoken language because um, we wanted to be able to communicate with Liam and we wanted him to be able to hear and to be able to speak. Yes, my older boy Liam is four and he actually has profound to severe hearing loss and he has one cochlear implant and he should be wearing a hearing aid. Um, and my son Finn actually has unilateral loss and he has hearing in his left ear. We have received so much support from DePaul, from their workshops to just networking here in between the families and meeting different families with children with hearing loss. And they have been wonderful. They support you in every way. And an example of that is just I wanted to meet with Liam's speech teacher recently, and we had sat down and talked about some different things that we were working on at home. Um, he was having trouble saying F, so I came in and I talked to Miss Rhonda about it. And, you know, she had given me some suggestions to work on at home. And so we started really, you know, working on the different things that she had suggested, and they are working. Um, some of the things that he does at home is that he likes to play little games. So she incorporated games into his homework and we're working on those things. And he's, he's come such a long way. The opportunities are endless for Liam and his life. Um, I feel like Paul has totally changed his life. He's able to go out into the community and he's able to communicate with the world now. Um, and because of his cochlear implant and because of the rehabilitation that we've received, um, he's able to do anything that a hearing child in this world can do, which is completely amazing. I think for the longest time, um, my husband and I and our family, we would talk to Liam and, you know, we would never hear any responses from him. It was just always give him the information, then he would process it, and then he would say it. And for the longest time, it seemed like we were working on things like that and just, you know, talking to him, trying to get him to talk more. And I think the first time where I actually just, as a mother, got choked up was the first time that I had said, well, I always had said to him, I love you all the time. And he had never, he would never say it back to me. And the first time he did say that back to me was just overwhelming. And it's something, as a parent of a child that is deaf, you think you're never going to hear or you're never going to, you know, hear them talk. And when he said that, I was just, I was overwhelmed. But not only that, just the things that he says in general. Now he's, his teacher, Miss Jessica, is so, has been so encouraging lately. And she keeps saying to him, oh, big thumbs up, Liam, big thumbs up. So every time he comes home now, like if he does something good, he'll be like, big thumbs up, mom, big thumbs up. And it's just, it's so heartwarming to hear your child say those things.